is a buttonhole foot for my Genome sewing machine, and I had no idea what it was for until a few days ago when I Google image searched everything that came with this machine. So I'm gonna try and figure out how to use it all on my own because I'm self-taught and that's what I do. And if it's as easy as I hope it is, I will design and make an overly buttoned outfit to practice. Let me play with this and figure it out. I know that this part in the middle here is where the foot attaches, so I'm assuming because its range of motion is limited and decided by how far this clicking thing works, that that determines the size of the buttonhole it's going to be able to make, and that the buttonhole maker moves as the stitch is made. I didn't even know that that was there! I had no idea. What? Okay. I knew to check for a lever because of a comment I received. Grabbing a scrap piece of fabric in a very slow setting, I pick the stitch on my machine that looks like a buttonhole and just kind of go for it. Mm, there we go. Successful thing. Now that I am overconfident in my machine's buttonhole ability, I need to find a tutorial for a more correct way to sew a button because I'm pretty sure the vague memory of my mom telling me how to sew a button and the just going for it method I'm used to using won't hold up long term. Okay, so I was correct in that I was doing buttons entirely wrong. I was sewing them in a star sort of pattern and then just tying it off as best I could. But obviously there's a better way how to do that. But the video I watched was in 480p and 10 years old, so here's my version of what I learned. I tried to sew the same button on three different times, slowly in front of the camera to make a tutorial, but I messed up every time. The first time, I didn't cut enough string. The second time, I didn't turn off the camera. And the third time, I made a mess of a knot in the back. So, we're gonna focus on creating a design that involves a lot of buttons so that I can practice and then give you a tutorial at the end. Because unlike the buttonhole foot, sewing the actual buttons does require a little bit of skill. The design came about by throwing a silhouette down that I liked the look of based off of a skirt that I liked the fit of but couldn't properly recreate so I just replaced all the difficult parts with buttons and then looked for any seams that didn't seem impractical and replaced those with buttons as well. We now interrupt your regularly scheduled time lapse to bring you accent fabric selection. This skirt already has a pair of fabrics that are sheer and a base layer and go together but seem basic and boring. Next, I promise that these are two different greens from a top sheet that is the basis of the pattern drafting so I know we have enough of it to make the project. With a little more distinction is this pattern green that seemed too busy but would have worked fine. This discount remnant fabric piece is very pretty and I want to use it in something but there's not enough of the pattern to be symmetrical. These dark flowers made only the idea cut because of the sheerness of the base but I don't want to use it for practice. I'm trying to come up with a combo for sheer sleeves and the top layer of the skirt in this duo. It's a curtain that I can't put up in my rental without putting holes in the wall and a single yard of cut of fabric which I think is entirely cotton so even though it looks great I'm not sure I'll have enough of it. Back to the math of taking the 3D design in my head onto a draft of a two-dimensional pattern and then copying the skirt I like with extra room on one side for the button panel overlap. With the individual pieces complete it's time to find the fabric for them by using the basic colored skirt as a base so that I have enough of the main color for the top getting a preview of the combo of the colors and cutting it all out. I have a decision to make and I really don't want to make it. Now that the main piece for the top is all put together with like the arm and the main and then the other arm, I'm running into the issue of I don't know how to hem this curve right here, the one that's going up and down over my face. I don't know how to do that because if I just fold the edge and sew it down, it'll look stupid and crinkly and weird. So the only way to make that edge not raw and fraying like the rest of it uh, would be to add a lining fabric which means making a duplicate of everything and sewing that onto the back and flipping everything inside out and just a lot of extra work. But when it comes down to it I don't know if I'm prepared to do that much extra work for a piece that is about practicing buttons. Of course I could just learn how to hem a curved edge but I'm already learning how to do buttons and I'm not gonna do double time which is the attitude that I'm kind of taking towards like lining it because it's gonna be a practice piece anyway so it doesn't really need to have the longevity of a real piece but I don't want to make something and then never wear it because that's like entirely wasteful. All these seams will be itchy and the edges will be falling apart and it'll look stupid if I don't do it. 
But why would I put that much effort into something that's just practice, you know? It's just... It's a conundrum, and I should probably just suck it up and line it, but I'm gonna stare at the wall for a while and think about it. Okay, so the lining fabric that I chose, this brown color, is heavier than the main fabric, but it's fine because it's stretchy in all four directions, so my misguided scissors still managed to make a correct fit in general. However, a couple of caveats. Number one, I put a circle hole cut in the middle, which is kind of impossible to turn inside out once it's sewn in place because you just turn into a Mobius strip and nobody has any fun with that. So I had to cut open the top and then top stitch that back together. Also, while trying it on, I realized that originally it was incredibly short, so I had to add some fabric in the front to hide the bits, but I didn't have enough fabric to wrap that all the way around the back, so we're gonna try and adjust the design accordingly so that that back part is kind of a lace-up using button holes instead of grommets so that the sheer fabric can thread through them in a pretty back piece moment, hopefully. When I was originally making these pattern pieces, I did consider seam allowance for the main pieces together, but I did not consider hem allowance around the edges. So both the head hole and the arm holes are wider than they need to be, and all around the edges are just smaller. The brown fabric is a heavier fabric than the main fabric, so it does slip and show some of the brown fabric while wearing the main piece, which is annoying, but it's mostly annoying because now it's heavier and more insulating for the heat. This is why I never do linings. Maybe if I just picked a better fabric, it would have been better, but you know who's to say. Anyways, let's get started on the sleeves. Before we continue, I would just like to note that the shape that I cut out actually looks kind of stupid on my arm. It's on the bottom. I don't know why in my head I thought it would transfer to the top and just be puffy all around by creating that shape. The issue now is that I have sewn everything for the top half of the outfit that needs to be sewn together. I can either sew all the buttons and buttonholes for the top piece, or I can work on the skirt half of the project and then do all of the buttons at once. I'm not sure, I'll do a cold cut to it. So the skirt has four layers, two of which are a solid cream base, the third is a gauzy cream. All three of those are from the bridesmaid dress that didn't really fit, and then the fourth is that reddish, orangish, clear gauze that matches the sleeves from the top. I'm gonna wait to install that front piece till I see which side I like facing outward. But before I do that, I have to hem four full lengths of the skirt. Why do I do this to myself? I don't own a serger. This is gonna take forever. started by dumping out most of the buttons that I had and then beginning to organize them. First by taking the larger buttons out of the pile, then splitting them into buttons with two holes and buttons with four holes, and then from there into even smaller piles based on their general size. I then promptly googled the use case for buttons with two holes and buttons with four holes to find the buttons with two holes are more for decorative purposes and buttons with four holes are more for strength and utility over time. Using that information and the amount of buttons I had in each size and type category, I designated different buttons for different parts of the project, totaling together for, well now I gotta count them, hold on a minute, okay that's 17 inches out to 36, what's that math, that's 19, there's two rows, that's, oh this is gonna be a lot, that's like 38, over here we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, another 18 plus the 38 we already have, quick maths, 56, double checking my quick maths. 
Yeah, that's 56 buttons. I'm gonna number individually all of the buttons and where the buttonholes go on the garment so that I can match the right placement with the right buttonhole and I don't mess it up further down the line. So many buttons. It's for practice, you can do this. Okay, Sharpie time. Hey, so I was perfectly set up for a time lapse for this entire thing until I tested this Sharpie paint marker on the back of one of the buttons and it immediately smeared everywhere. And I have a feeling that's gonna be difficult to get out of the fabric. I don't own fabric chalk and I've used enough just regular pencil lead and pen on these pieces already. So I'm just gonna take a couple of pictures and pin a few things in place and put these buttons into designated Ziploc baggies and call it good. Cause this is far too much work for the outcome. Here's hoping that rushing this step doesn't kill the entire project. Cause I've done that before. I don't know which direction is a thumbs up, but thumbs up to the sky, it's good. <laughs> Cause that top bag only includes buttons for the triangle part of the top and not the direct down part. So it's gonna be more than 56. I'll come back to you in a second. It's just gonna be an additional nine. So instead of 56, it's gonna be 65 buttons, which looks better in a thumbnail anyways. I'm annoyed. I missed something and it could have been so simple. Did I even hit record? I swear, if I didn't hit record, when I set aside the 56 buttons and thought I had set aside enough for the entire project, this is actually the areas that I was covering. And in blue are the areas of the design that I was not covering. Now if I went through and selected buttons for the blue areas, I would have a total of 76 instead of 56. 76 buttons! And I think 50 is plenty practice enough. So we're sticking with 56, and the way I'm gonna do it is take 20 out of the 39 from the top pieces and distribute them eight down the center and 12 on the wrist, six on each arm, so that I still only have 56 buttons total. They might just be every other inch because every inch, let's be honest, was a little bit of overkill. Ah! I could have just done this from the start, I wasted time, I wasted almost a whole day figuring this out. It's just button math, I can be better. I was just dreading having to actually do the buttons. So, let's get started, I guess. in the top so when you seam it it's fine poke stab through and we're ripping to the top good through 55 buttonhole stitches of practice my buttonholes have gone from looking like this all the way to looking like this a much cleaner and simpler look and a better overall stitch now all i have to do is sew the 55 buttons to go in the 55 buttonholes oh and then also sew like the eight buttonholes to do the crisscrossy thing in the back and sew a tube of fabric to go through that but let's just start with the buttons
it's raining outside and I'm not gonna ruin my camera so here are some indoor pictures of it because I love it look at it I did such a good job I sewed 55 buttons and 59 button holes the two are in the back for the zigzagginess of the tie just to make the waist a little more snatched but it is giving a little bit of firebender from the La Avatar The Last Airbender, I will give you that. However, I love it nonetheless. It's not itchy because I lined and hemmed things. I was learning a skill, so you can definitely tell that it was homemade. And I am wearing heels to make my legs look longer for the shoot and they're starting to hurt. But overall, I think this is the closest I've come to actually accurately executing a design that I've thought of in a long time. Almost exactly what I drew. I like it, it looks good, and if it wasn't raining right now, I'd probably go outside in public in it. Now for the people who actually want to learn how to sew a button and button hole, and not just here for the entertaining chaos of me figuring it out. Here is what I learned over 50 different attempts in a tutorial format. Starting with the button sewing itself. You'll not need a sewing machine for this, just some other materials. First, a sewing needle. The kit I bought had some dull ones in there for some other purpose, so just make sure to grab a sharp one. Next, thread. Because I knew I wanted to do several buttons, I bought specific button sewing thread that was labeled as such, but I'm sure you probably don't need to absolutely do that. Any thread should work. Then fabric and your button. I'll be demonstrating with a four hole button because the two hole technique is very similar, just simpler. Put a length of thread through the eye of the needle and tie off the loop. Place your button where you would like and from the back side of the fabric to the front, poke your needle through the fabric and one of the button holes. Pull the thread all the way through so the knot is the only part on the back of the fabric. An easy way to make sure no additional loops or anything is caught behind it is to tug on each side of the thread individually like so. Cut the tails off of that knot. From here, you will dive the needle through a diagonally opposite hole in the button and pull all the way through. Take your needle in a circle by going in and out of those same two holes three to five times, pulling the thread fully during each repetition to avoid knotting. The positioning of the button and the cleanliness of the back stitch depends on these first few stitches, so be careful to hold your button securely in place with your other hand and try to poke through at the same angle and approximately the same location. After three to five repetitions while your needle and thread are on the back side of the fabric, change directions and repeat the same three to five stitches from before on the other two holes in the same diagonal pattern. Now there should be a solid X shape on the back, we can move on to something called the shank. This gives the button some extra stability while allowing it the flexibility to maneuver through a buttonhole and not be flush with the fabric. To do this, from the back side of the fabric, poke through the fabric and only the fabric so that the needle is between the button and the fabric and pull through. Wrap the thread around itself in a circle and tug it tight when it makes it back to the starting position. Repeat this another four or five times before diving back through the fabric to the back side. The shank stitches never go through the button itself. Finally, all that's left is to tie it off. Take a small stitch by poking into just the fabric and back out very close to the start. Pull the needle through to leave a loop of fabric behind. Put the needle and thread back through its own loop to create a knot. Cut the remaining thread off of your needle and, for good measure, tie those two strings to themselves and cut off the excess. Congratulations! You have now sewn a button and it probably sucks. This is mine after practicing over 50 times in a row and it's still a little sloppy, but all of them are secure in the project itself so it's fine. Now onto navigating sewing the buttonholes with a machine. I will first show you the janky way I had been doing it before discovering a buttonhole foot in case you're ever in a position that requires it. Start by placing your button on the fabric to mark its size. Thread your machine and bobbin like you normally would and place your foot down a little bit to the left of the top mark using the lever on the back of your machine. Set the stitch to be very small in length but fairly large in width. Here are the settings that work best on my machine. Press the button to ensure when you lift from a stitch the needle stays in your piece. At a medium pace, you can catch any errors, begin stitching down the side. Once you reach the bottom marker, stop, lift up the foot, and turn your fabric underneath to change directions, put the foot down, and continue for however wide your buttonhole needs to be. Continue in this pattern until a full square is made, and poke a hole out of the middle with the seam ripper. Hot tip, you can put a needle at the top of the buttonhole beforehand so you don't rip farther on accident. This works fine, but doesn't look very nice and isn't very precise. The buttonhole foot and stitch, when they work, look amazing. My stitches went from looking like this all the way to this through practice, so here's what I've learned. It's mostly prep work because the machine is stupid. 
Remove whatever foot you were previously working with, mine snaps right off. The thread is much easier to put through the main hole before the buttonhole foot is attached. Snap it on and pull some very long tail threads out of the, both the bobbin and the needle. You can find the buttonhole lever thingy on the back of your machine, generally opposite to the foot lever. Pull that out and place it between these two ticks on the buttonhole foot. Grab your button, place it in the back half of the foot and compress those ticks until snug to set the size of your stitch. Hold your tail threads off to the left hand side instead of to the back and bring your fabric to the machine. If possible, place the larger side of your project to the right, under the arm of the machine. And if doing a line of buttons, start with more fabric behind the machine instead of on your side. These precautions are due to the workflow and direction of the buttonhole stitch and help to prevent accidental triggerings of restarts or knotting. If working with multiple layers of fabric, I recommend pinning the area around the buttonhole in place to prevent shifting between them. If working on a hemline, I would also suggest waiting to hem until after the buttonholes have been sewn, because in my experience, this does not do very well with navigating uneven thicknesses. Finally, find your pre-programmed buttonhole stitch on your machine and select it. Now that prep is done, you're ready to actually sew. Set the foot down so the bottom mark lines up with the center line on the foot. Starting with a slow pace stitch so it's easier to keep an eye on any issues, press the pedal down and begin the stitch. If all goes well, the machine should work on the bottom left side up to the top, basic stitch towards you, and then buttonhole back up the right hand side before finishing the square, all just by pressing down on the foot pedal. If anything goes wrong, it's a little bit difficult to rescue. Examples. If the lever in the back gets bumped before the sizing tick on the side is meant to bump it, the machine will make the buttonhole too small. If the thread gets caught on itself or the layers it's sewing through, it is difficult but still possible to manually pull the fabric through underneath the foot to bring it to an untouched piece of fabric and continue the stitch. That is difficult because of the size of the fabric locked down by the foot, the issue itself, timing, and the possibility of bumping the lever in the previous example. At multiple points through my practice piece, I had to bail halfway through and use my janky method to complete the buttonhole because of knotting caused by anything other than the perfect situation because machines are stupid and can't resolve problems in any other way than restarting. There you go, a precise and small buttonhole stitch that you just had to commit to the bit or quit to get. To finish it off, again, simply insert a pin at the top of the stitch and a seam ripper at the other end and rip the hole open. I'm done. I did it. Goodbye for buttonholes for a while. Next on the list, zippers, or maybe curved hems.